Hey guys, welcome back to Ostrich Investing. Today we're going to talk about BAM's net asset value. So Brookfield Asset Management was originally profiled back in September 2019. I'll put a link to that video up in the top right. Uh, recent volatility in the markets gives us lots to discuss and an update is definitely in order. So points for discussion today. I'm going to do a quick update on the businesses. We're going to talk about key drivers through COVID and beyond. And then we're going to spend most of our time talking about the NAV, the net asset value valuation. So both the invested capital as well as the value of the asset management franchise. And we're going to have a bull base and bear case scenario for each. So disclosure, uh, once upon a time and a, a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away uh, and at much lower prices, I, I bought shares of BAM and have held uh, ever since. So here we go. Here's the share price chart. You can see over the last five years, it had been quite a good, good ride. Uh, but as I mentioned, uh, the Everest, Everest expeditions disrupted by COVID and investors are back to base camp here. So you can see they had reached a high and these are all in US dollars, by the way, just to be apples to apples with their financials. Got up around $45 uh, in early 2020, currently at $32 a share and change. So here's the business update. I couldn't find an updated uh, view of this chart, so I took the old one and put my uh, graphic skills to good use here. Uh, so you can see the business, and we know that they've got a big stake in, in Brookfield Properties, Brookfield Renewables, Brookfield Infrastructure, and then their private equity group. So you can see here, on the property side, we had done a quick video. They announced the substantial, uh, uh, they announced the issuer bid and will likely increase their stake in BPY to a little over 60%. So we fixed that. They've also closed on the acquisition of Oak Tree, uh, which brings uh, specialized credit into the fold, and they've got a 61% interest there. And then just quickly here, you're thinking through COVID and how their business lines have been affected. Uh, I just looked at it really on a TTM uh, FFO basis, so didn't spend a ton of time we know it's obvious that the retail side, uh, the real estate side, sorry, that has retail and office exposure has been negatively impacted. The other businesses have largely performed well uh, from what we can see to date. Oak Tree, a little too early to tell. So key drivers for BAM. And the first thing we'll say is fee bearing capital. Oak Tree's in the house here. Uh, so we're up to $264 billion. And a lot of these key drivers were mentioned in our first video, but growing their fee bearing capital, deploying that capital profitably, and the fee, inc fee earnings that they, that they generate. So both the base uh, fee, fee income as well as the carried interest. Interest rates are another big one for them. 100 basis points in their investor presentation, anyway, they say 100 basis points, cap rate change drives $20 per share. So it's huge. Uh, if you think about a, a $33 share price. And the BPY recovery plan. So we know that that's been the most affected part of their business through this. And uh, earnings are down, has high leverage, and uh, that'll be a big driver for the story. And then lastly, debt and liquidity, uh, core versus the group. So you can see here highlighted corporate liquidity at the BAM level. They've got four and a half billion. Then at the broader group, you can see they've got significant third-party uncalled private fund commitments, so $46 billion uh, potentially available to deploy if they find attractive opportunities. Financials. Um, we've talked about this before. I don't like to include the realized disposition gains, but if you back that out and look at it from an operating FFO perspective, uh, business continues to perform reasonably well and grow operating FFO of $1.82 and, and their metric, this cash available for distribution and or reinvestment of $1.88 uh, per share. That's up 13% uh, year over year. And the last thing to note here, they break out um, the, the cash available for distribution as a uh, excluding the realized carried interest and including the realized carried interest. And what we can see is the realized carry 331 million is currently a small part of the overall cash flow. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. 
So on the net asset value, we're going to talk first about invested capital, and then we'll talk about the value of the fee income. So on the invested capital, as you can see here, uh, Brookfield Properties, in terms of market value, is 4.3 billion. It's actually up a little bit. This, this is dated um, you know, March 31st, 2020. Uh, then they've got the IFRS value, and on a blended basis, they've chosen to take the IFRS value, whereas in all of the other subsidiaries case, they take the market value. And so we've got Dikimbi Mutombo here, um, who's saying no way, he's got the finger wag, and I think you know we're going to make some adjustments to management's assumptions here, and that's one of them. Uh, we're going to bring BPY to market. Fee revenue. There's two parts to the fee revenue. You got the base fees, which they show actual versus annualized. So on an actual basis, uh, almost 1.3 billion in in base fees, and then on an annualized basis, what they use for their their NAV, it's pretty close. It's about 1.3. But where we get Bill Belichuk up in arms here is on the carried interest. The actual is 181 million for 2020 and the annualized or the target carry is close to 1.6 billion. So, so Bill's throwing the challenge flag out there and we'll see uh, what adjustments we want to make to the NAV from that perspective. Fee revenue. Okay. So just to jump into how we get to that 1.6 billion of target, you can see the 2.8 here of total carry eligible capital less the target carried interest not attributable to BAM shareholders. And that gets you down to 2.4 billion. And then there's some costs. You got to share that with some of the employees that have, that have earned it. And so that's what gets you down to the 1.6 billion net of costs. And that's their target carry. You can see it's well diversified uh, by industry. Um, and you can see, and this is on a gross basis here, this 2.795. Um, matches but you can see it's it's rising but they haven't realized this yet this is the target carried interest okay so let's put it all together on an nav per share we've got management's version here as at march 31st uh, 2020 which says that their total plan value per share is 51 dollars 74 so significantly higher than the current share price so we talked about the annualized base fee earnings, 1.291 billion, and that was reasonable. That's pretty much pretty close to their run rate. So we'll give that the check mark. The target carried interest at least seemed aggressive for now, uh, significantly higher than what they're currently generating. So we've got uh, we're going to question there. The multiples that I apply to both of these businesses, 25 times for the base fees, 10 times for the for the target. Put a question mark there. And then on the invested capital side, we've already discussed that Brookfield Properties, we're going to change that and reduce the value um, to align with what the market value is. So those are the changes that we're going to look at. And we'll look at sort of a, a bull or optimistic case base and then a, a bear case. So here we go. So on the bull side, um, all we're going to do, we're basically going to keep all of management's assumptions except for BPY. We're going to value that stake at market as opposed to IFRS. And if we do that, that gets us to an implied share price of $45, which is still a 39% premium to the current share price. The base case, we're going to once again value BPY stake at market, but then we're also going to reduce the multiples on the asset management franchise. So we're going to bring it down from 25 to 20 on the base fees. And note to, uh, to everyone, that's the multiple BAM used to use up until about six months ago. So we're just going to bring that into 20. And then the carried interest, which presumably can be a lot more volatile, definitely is not guaranteed. It's all based on performance. We're going to drop that down from 10 times to five times. But we're not going to change their assumptions around the fee earnings, the annualized fee earnings that they, we've held those constant. So if you do that, the implied share price is $37 per share, which is a small 14% premium to the current share price. <clears throat> now in the bear case scenario, 
uh, and, and here just being more conservative on our assumptions. What we've done is the asset management business, the multiple again, we've reduced to 20 times and five times respectively, but we've also dropped the fee earnings. So the base fee earnings we've, we've taken at 85% of management and the target carry we've taken at 50%. Um, and then the last thing here on the invested capital, we've actually reduced BPY's market value to zero. Now, um, the, the market value is sub 10 billion here. Um, so in the grand scheme of things, it, it's, it's not huge compared to everything else in the, in the business, but uh, we know that there's lots of leverage. We know it's a challenge, a challenge area for them. So here what we're saying, we're, we're probably being a little, little too conservative here, but we're just saying, hey, let's just assume there's no equity value left in BPY. And what happens here, you get an implied share price of $28, which is a 14% discount to the current share price. So three different ways of looking at it. And again, we're just talking about the net asset value today. So in conclusion, you know, BAM projects out NAV over five years in their investor day, but what we've done today is just focus on the estimates of current NAV. Feel free to use your own estimates, projections, and extrapolate. BAM's current estimate of, of NAV at Q1 is, I think it's aggressive at $51.74 per share. Um, but if we adjust for the BPY market value and potentially more conservative carried interest assumptions, I think that gets us closer to a more accurate estimate. And, you know, we know here the structure is complicated. There, there's potential conflicts of interest across the BAM empire, although I think to date they've done a reasonably good job at, at managing those. Uh, it can be a little bit difficult for investors to follow. But despite the recent market volatility and challenges with BPY, you know, if we think back to the start of the video, we looked at their financials. BAM does continue to execute. They are generating meaningful free cash flow to the parent with no real leverage or liquidity concerns at, at the BAM level. You're aligned with best in class Canadian management team and the NAV shows support for the share price in all but the bear case assumptions. So even if we pull back some of management's assumptions on, on their net asset value with the current share price in the low thirties, there's reasonable support um, with more conservative uh, assumptions. I do suspect BAM shares are gonna have an overhang until the market has more visibility or resolution on, on BPY. And I think the other thing to keep in mind here in this low to no interest rate environment, this could, um, and obviously it can go both ways, but in a lower lower for longer rate environment, it could drive a powerful bull case for BAM. Uh, they do own and control significant assets that uh, the valuations of which are largely driven on cap rates or, or interest rates. And if those uh, continue to compress, um, that could drive the valuation, which will have the knock-on effect of driving uh, carried interest and, and could be quite a powerful story for BAM if that were to unfold. So that's it for today's video. I tried to go through it relatively quickly to avoid having a big, long, long video, but I'd love to hear from you. Are you a BAM bull or bear? There's lots going on here. And it is turning into a story, I think, where people either love BAM or, or hate it. It's becoming a bit of a polarizing uh, story. Uh, so please comment below. We'd love to hear your thoughts. And that's it for today's video. Until next time, happy investing and don't bury your head in the sand.